So two years ago, I entered a competition for a satellite idea, which the UK Space Agency and BBC helped me. I got second in this competition, and you had to like come up with an idea um, to use this satellite to help the world. So obviously, I wanted them to monitor like poachers to see if there's poachers killing animals. So I love animals. And I got second in this competition, and this is the design I did. So since I got top five, my name was engraved on the satellite and the satellite called the Prometheus 2 launched in Cornwall and this made me think a lot about animals in space and space uh, so this is why I'm making an animals in space video from seeing animals in the sky made out of clouds or star constellations named after animals that look like animals humans have been fascinated by animals in space we also sadly used animals to for scientific research and our knowledge of space would not have been possible without animals when you look up in the sky you'll probably be seeing a star constellation named after animals it's like the big bear there's a scorpion there's loads! Now a constellation, a star constellation, is a grouping of stars. Now most of the star constellations that we know came from the Greek and Roman cultures. So most of the constellations are named after Greek and Roman stuff, like objects from their stories, animals they look up to, yeah. and. They each and every one of them symbolise something. Now over time, loads of people from around the world, India, Africa, everywhere, basically, started drawing pictures of these star constellations. And most of them are related to animals. Now let's start with prehistoric times. Did you know that 40 thousand years ago ancient people used stars to tell the time and also to guide their way back home now we know that some caveman paintings aren't just the pictures or drawings of animals they're the drawings of the star constellations upper and this is thanks to researchers at the University of Kent and Edinburgh in Scotland. And all of the caves that they analysed represented the same drawings of the animals in the sky. Now the Native Americans had incredible astronomy, mind-blowing astronomy skills. They named a ton of star constellations after Bears, otters, wolves, snakes, ravens. Awesome. Now the Aztecs also made tons of animal star constellations too. The, most, the two most associated were the eagle and the jaguar, both of which leapt into the great, great fire to give birth to the sun. Now the deer could be seen carrying the sun or the rabbit could be seen carrying the moon. These show depictions of like hummingbirds and the cows. Now the Mayans also had tons of animal depictions like jaguars, spider monkeys, tigers and lots lots more. And you can see these animals engraved to like the amazing pyramids. In India, Jantamanta Observatory, they have tons of depictions, like cows, tigers, there's lions, scorpions, cows, and much, much more. For a while now, we have been making maps of star constellations, and I'm going to show you some maps of star constellations too. Now I'm going to show you um, some stuff from the 
16th, 17th, 18th century. Uh, now, this stuff is maps of star constellations. So let me show you right now. And as you can see, there are loads and loads of animals on the maps. So now let's talk about how animals will help humans learn more about space. Now, in Paris, Versailles, um, they sent a duck, a chicken, and a sheep on an air balloon to go up, to hopefully go up into space. And they came down and survived. And that was in 1783. Now, it was only in the 20th century when uh, humans started going up to space, like building rockets and stuff. But really, all the astronauts did, they should be celebrated, but they took all the credit. There are animals who went up to space and died. They are the true heroes. This is why we know so much about space. Animals. We wouldn't have been able to send humans up to space if it weren't for animals. So we shouldn't thank them as well. Now, all of the books about space, most of the books about space, they don't include these animals. Now, in 1947, humans sent fruit flies to space. Now, do you want to look how small they are? They're tiny! <laughs> if they need an astronaut suit, it's going to be like one millimetre long. But the animals that were sent the most up to space were primates. One of the primates, the first mammal, was the first mammal ever. ever. How about the second went up to space oh, and went over 83 miles into the sky, but sadly he did not survive. And that was in 1949. But the most famous one by far was definitely Laika, who got sent up in 1957. Um, now, Laika was a stray dog from Moscow, and she was the first one to be put in orbit around Earth. But sadly, she died because of this. Now, somebody from the Russian agency even said that it caused suffering for, the, for these animals, and they regretted sending animals up to space. So they apologised for the like mission. And they said they didn't learn enough to justify them losing Laika or Laika losing her life. Now, France was the first country to send an animal up to space and make it come back down alive. And this was Felicite, a little small cat in the 60s. Now, her flight only lasted 10 minutes. But they even bought, made a statue of that one, so. They also sent two turtles to space in 1968. And they even sent two spiders called Anita and Annabella. I'm a bit disappointed. I don't know where Spider-Man is on this mission. Um, he could have saved the thing. But they made an amazing discovery in 1973. They found out that they could make spider webs in zero Gravity! Isn't that insane? They sent to see. Now NASA has been carrying on sending animals up to space. They sent a zebrafish. They even sent a jellyfish to see if zero gravity would affect organisms. <laughs> and did you know that these jellyfish were literally born in space? Now, obviously, these animals didn't want to go to space. It's really cruel. We do really cruel things to animals sometimes. And it's awful just sending them up to space for scientific knowledge. It's losing their lives. But space can be awesome for animals because the Icarus mission um, monitored migratory birds and animal activity. Now, satellites can help animals a lot. Also for our research, research we can learn new things about animals. So space can have a lot of benefits to save and injured animals. I hope you enjoyed my video. I have a couple books that I want to show you. First one, obviously, is Black Dot in Space that I wrote by then.
by myself. I'm not going to be giving too many spoilers, but it's about animals going into space. It's about a cheetah going into space, and he discovers a new planet. It's an ebook, so I buy it on Kindle or wherever you can buy it. Basically, all the money that I get from this will go onto uh, will go to a cheetah conservation fund. The next book I want to show you is Laika the Astronaut. So obviously it's about the dog, Laika, who basically went to space. And uh, in this photo it's him as a stray dog. It's also written by Owen Davy, a great author in my opinion. The next one, probably one of my favourite books of all time, uh, this is called Professor Astro Cat's Solar System, and it says Welcome Planet Explorers. And it's one of my favourite books. You see, um, it's just the cat is the sun. I used to read this all the time, and it also gives you tons of cool fun facts. And they also start to really overheat once they go to the sun. I mean, they're wearing sunglasses after all. That's a good sign. And the final one is a book that I got for my birthday called Seeing Stars. Now it's an awesome book where you could see like star constellations, for example, the hair. It's an awesome uh, book because you can see this. There's the greater dog. Oh, there's tons, there's the bull. Yes. And most of these are just animals. Isn't that just... And my star sign is Tauros, so yeah. <laughs> most of the animals, most of these are animals. And it shows you like the brightest star and the constellations. It's a great, great book. But yeah, all of the, those are all of the books I have to show you today. I, I hope you have a good day and I'll see you all next time. But one more thing, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!